Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson and today we are going to learn about the very long geologic history of our planet. It's time to go back to the future! So we are here at Sawyer Point, which is home to a geologic timeline that stretches back 450 million years. That's a long time, but our planet is much older than that, around 4.6 billion years ago. That's a really hard number to visualize, so to help us understand that, we're going to run all the way back to when our planet formed. Ready? Let's go. So here we are, 4.6 billion with the B years ago. To give you an idea of how long ago that is, the geologic timeline at Sawyer Point is around a quarter mile long, and we are over two and a half miles away from where we started. That is a huge number to wrap your head around. So what was the Earth like 4.6 billion years ago? In a word, crazy. The earliest Earth was actually molten, and it took millions of years for our planet to cool enough for the crust to form. And even then, there were volcanoes going off everywhere, and the surface was constantly being hit by asteroids. Eventually, things cooled down enough for water to condense and for the oceans to form from the most violent thunderstorms in the history of our planet. Oh yeah, and the atmosphere was a mixture of carbon dioxide, methane, ammonia, basically poison. Not a fun place to be, but eventually things calmed down enough for life to evolve. Here we are at the beginning of life, about 3.5 billion years ago. No one knows exactly how life formed, but there was a lot of energy left over from the formation of the planet, which helped form the basic chemical building blocks needed for life. But it took a long time for these chemical building blocks to come together to make a living thing, almost a billion years. And even then, it was just single-celled bacteria living in our oceans. For almost a billion years, bacteria had the planet to themselves. In fact, geologists call this era the boring billion. But of course, life didn't stay like that. Around 2.7 billion years ago, a more complex form of life began to evolve, eukaryotes. These cells are much more complicated than prokaryotes because they have specialized parts called organelles. That includes things like the nucleus to hold DNA, the mitochondria to produce energy, and chlorophyll to capture the sun's rays during photosynthesis. Eukaryotes likely evolved when bacteria were living close together in symbiosis and eventually started to live inside one another. But still, this took a really long time, over 1.2 billion years. But it's a big deal because almost every living thing you see today, from your dog to the trees, even you, are made up of eukaryotic cells. About 600 million years ago, we finally begin to see the first multicellular animals. This began when single-celled eukaryotes began living together in a colony. By working together, these colonies could get a lot bigger and obtain more resources. Now, after a while, the cells in these colonies started to specialize, with some cells getting really good at capturing food, while others were good at providing structure. Now, the first multicellular animals weren't that glamorous. They were simple organisms like sponges, but soon afterwards, things really started to diversify. Scientists call this period the Cambrian Explosion because millions of different species evolved in a very short amount of time, including a lot of species that are alive today. Finally, after over four billion years and two miles of running, we finally get back to the beginning of the geologic trail at Sawyer Point around 450 million years ago. At this point, Earth's oceans were filled with some of the strangest things you've ever seen, including giant trilobites, weird seashell-looking things called brachiopods, and 20-foot cephalopods. Most of the bedrock in Cincinnati is from this time period, so you can go out to a creek bed or a roadside and find a lot of these fossils. Now, if you were to get into a time machine and go back to this point, it would have been like a completely different planet. The atmosphere would look pink because it didn't have as much oxygen in it, and there would be no trees or shrubs or rivers on the land, just barren rock and 
braided streams, but it didn't stay like that. Around 360 million years ago, we start to see the first land animals. Our distant ancestors who took the first steps onto dry land looked a lot like giant salamanders. But the transition wasn't easy. It's a relatively simple thing to get oxygen and stay hydrated when you're living in the ocean, but it's much more difficult on dry land. This transition took millions of years, which again is a really long time, but relatively short when you compare it to the total age of the Earth. But this is a big step because it allowed for a lot of other things to evolve, including dinosaurs. 65 million years ago was the worst day on the history of life on this planet, when an asteroid over six miles wide slammed into the surface going at least 44,000 miles an hour. This vaporized anything within thousands of miles and caused a tsunami over 300 feet tall. The heat caused by the impact alone lit forest fires that raged on continents on the other side of the planet. On top of all that destruction, an enormous amount of rock was thrown into the air, which not only rained back down on the earth, killing more things, but also blocked out the sun for years, keeping plants from photosynthesizing and destroying food chains. It's lucky any living thing survived the asteroid impact, but as the great Dr. Ian Malcolm once said, life finds a way. Birds, who were the relatives of dinosaurs, survived, but the biggest winner of all were mammals who took over the Earth, which leads us to the last stop on our tour. Finally, at the end of our trail, we get to us, humans. Humans have been around for around 500,000 years, which sounds like a long time, but after two and a half miles of running, that just accounts for eight inches. That's right, the entire existence of our species is just eight inches. In fact, our entire written history up to about 5,000 years ago accounts for just one sixth of an inch. That's it. Sometimes we humans like to think of ourselves as this incredibly successful species. And in some ways we are, but we just haven't been around for that long. Especially when you remember that for two billion years, life on Earth was limited to single-celled organisms. The Earth is just so old. And it's a hard thing to wrap your head around, so hopefully this video gave you a little bit of perspective on the age of our wonderful planet. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Science Around Sensi. Do you love science? Of course you do. So stay up to date on all things science around Scentsy by subscribing to our channel and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at SciAroundSensi.